I'm Sally and this is Battle Bits. In this video, we will be reading the first part of Unusual Chickens for the Exceptional Poultry Farmer by Kelly Jones. And this book is actually written in letters. So I am going to read the first three letters. All right, and there are some illustrations, so I will hold those up so you can see them too. All right, so this letter is to Mr. or Miss Catalog People, Redwood Farm Supply, Gravenstein, California. Dear people who send catalogs to people on farms. My great uncle Jim had your flyer in his barn. I can't ask him about it because he died a couple of months ago. But we live on his farm now, and if I have to live on a farm, I think it ought to be an interesting one with chickens and ducks and maybe some peacocks or something. Right now, we don't even have tomatoes, just rows and rows of grapevines, and they don't even have grapes yet. I can't find your website anywhere, so mom said I should write you a business letter and request a catalog. Your flyer says you have unusual chickens for the exceptional poultry farmer. I don't know what would make a chicken unusual, so maybe you'll send me your catalog and then I can st stop wondering about them. I do think you should know I'm a very responsible 12 year old. I did all my own packing and unpacking when we had to move. And I would be a good farmer. I always get A's on science projects and I never forget to water my bean seed or anything. Also, I know how to make French toast and pancakes without catching anything on fire or burning myself or melting the spatula, unlike my dad. So you can see it would be handy to have chickens and a cow and whatever flour comes from. They would need to be cheap though. We haven't got much money. Thank you for considering my request. I look forward to hearing from you at your earliest opportunity. I think mom must have found me some old letter format because no one talks like this. If I did this wrong, it isn't my fault. Sincerely, Sophie Brown. There's Sophie. Letter number two, June 4th, 2014. To Mariposa Garcia Gonzalez, Heaven. Querida Abuelita, I know you're dead and I don't believe in zombies, so you don't need to write back or anything. I just wanted to write to someone, kind of like a diary, only what does a diary care what I think? You might be dead, but you're still my grandmother and you still love me. No one writes back anyway, not even Latoya, even though she promised she would. I guess Katie was right when she told Latoya she'd have to be her best friend now since she'd never see me again. Latoya didn't say anything back and she didn't look at me and she doesn't answer my emails either. That's not what I'd call a best friend. We live on Great Uncle Jim's farm now, far from LA, so I couldn't go see you even if you were still alive. It's okay here, I guess. We have a whole house of our own, way bigger than anyone's apartment, and a barn too, and a place that's sort of like a garage for tractors. But we barely fit because Great Uncle Jim saved a whole lot of things just in case of who knows what. We made enough space in the attic for my bed, and if we clear some more things out, I will have a huge room up there. I thought we were moving to a real farm, but it's more like a big boring garden. Dead looking grapevines and blackbirds and junk piles and bugs, that's it. The barn isn't red like I thought barns were. Where it isn't painted, it's just really old brownish gray wood. It's kind of neat inside though. A ladder goes up to what mom says is the hayloft. Don't worry, it isn't falling down or anything. It's really peaceful like a library with a high ceiling and dusty old wood and it smells like a pumpkin patch. It makes me think of horses sleeping. The hayloft doesn't have any hay in it now. It's filled up with old furniture and dust and things in wooden boxes and under plastic tarps. I found this typewriter up here and a desk and I moved things around very carefully until I could sit here and type. It reminds me of your old typewriter, the red one you used to let me play with, the one mom learned to type on when she was little. I was glad I still remembered how to put the paper in and that the ribbon wasn't all worn out yet. When I hear that clicking, it always makes me think of you. Dad said it would be really quiet here, but he must have remembered it wrong. When I open the big wooden shutters in the barn loft, I can hear animal noises from, from the farms all around during the day, even though I know they're really far away. Kind of like the zoo. Who knew cows would be that loud? There's no glass in the window. 
Maybe it broke and Great Uncle Jim couldn't afford to fix it? Just a big open space. With the shutters open, I can look out down the driveway at the street and hear the birds making a racket. I'm careful to always close them when I leave the barn so it doesn't rain on my typewriter and so no animals get in. A couple of times today, I thought I saw something black run behind a junk pile really fast. A sort of medium-sized something, like a cat, but as fast as a fast car. Just a black streak, really. When I told Dad, he said maybe it was a raccoon. Mom rolled her eyes and said she's never seen a super speedy raccoon. I miss LA. There aren't any people around here, especially no brown people, except Gregory, our mailman. I like Gregory. He reminds me of Mr. Hightower, my teacher last year. They don't really look alike, but they're both tall black guys, and when they smile at you, it makes you feel like you did a great job on your science project or your letter or whatever, even if you didn't win a prize. I wish there were more people like Gregory here. Dad fits in fine, but Mom and I don't. I thought Mom didn't care where she lived as long as she had her computer and printer and me and Dad, since she always begs everyone to leave her alone so she can write at least when she's on deadline, and she's always on deadline since Dad lost his job. But Sunday afternoon, when all my aunts and cousins and everyone except us would be heading to Tio Fernando's to cook and eat and eat even more and then dance it all off, I saw her in the hallway, just staring at Great Uncle Jim's really ancient phone. She looked sad. I miss you a lot, Abuelita. I miss everyone. Te quiero, Sofisita. And letter number three, dated June 9th, 2014. To Mr. or Miss Catalog People, Redwood Farm Supply, Gravenstein, California. Dear people who, actu who apparently don't send catalogs to people on farms. Mom always says it's a bad idea to tell people what you think when you're angry. But I bet I'm going to be angry for a long time, so I don't see any point in waiting. Maybe you think I'm just a kid with no money whose parents probably won't let her have chickens anyway. Maybe you think sending me a catalog would be a waste of paper. But I know my letter got to you because Gregory, who delivers our mail, said he would take it to your farm, even though there, were no street num there was no street number on the flyer or anything, and that was the way some farms worked. Gregory is not the kind of person who would get that wrong. He's got his whole sleet and snow and rain commitment, and he takes that stuff seriously. Gregory has never, ever been late with our mail. Maybe if you had sent me a catalog, I could have started working on getting my parents to agree to some chickens. I'm good at planning ahead. Don't you ever worry that kids might not grow up to be farmers anymore? Or that even if they do, they won't buy your special chickens because you won't even write back? Maybe you should think about planning ahead too. Sincerely, Sophie Brown. Here are some pictures. And that is the beginning of Unusual Chickens for the Exceptional Poultry Farmer. Thank you for listening today, and I will see you next time.